Hey, Haley. Hi. Count down to the not a not a not a wedding. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's exciting. When's the date? In October, right? Mm -hmm. We're live. We're live. The doctor is in. <laughs> That's right. We are in. We're not 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 in. We're actually in. And we are. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I've been fangirling out over this one, and I'm, I'm so excited about September. Somebody tell us, what is September? Yeah. Yeah, so we are doing self-exam September leading up to Breast Cancer Action Month for October, right? Yay. That's what we're calling it, Breast Cancer Action Month, so. It is, right? Yeah. Yes, I, I, I love the fact that you call it self-exam, right? You're not just calling the self-breast exam. It, it's self-exam, self-chest, self-breast. So everybody's got two sets of mammaries, wherever they may be. Some people have more. I have seen them, you know, multiple. Wherever you got glands, you got to check them. And even <laughs> if you've had mastectomies, there's still something yeah, there yeah, to check. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think that we don't, doctors don't communicate that effectively because I, I find a lot of women who come to me, they're like, okay, well, the risk is zero after mastectomy, right? There's no more breast cancer, no more risk. It's not zero. You still got to check. Still got to. Got to check. Still got to check. Yeah, that's, that's what we tell tell women all the time that come to our app and use our app because it's it's such a great resource right. for Mona Lisa that, that teaches women who have breasts. And then we have Napoleon that teaches people who've had top surgery, men, um, women who have had mastectomies, gender non-binary. So there is someone for everyone in our app to teach you how to do it the right way. Right. No more confusion straightforward let's make it simple let's not talk about breast awareness let's talk about self-exam and let's teach women how to do it cool. so, so who are, are you there? people who are you people and what are you doing on our show and your why and your why we have to know <laughs> oh definitely I I'll, I'll give you my why so i am corinne beaumont i am the founder and the designer behind the know your lemons foundation uh, my why is i lost um, actually three grandmothers to breast cancer um, and a really close friend that I grew up with. Um, and a, as a designer, I thought, what can I do to change this? Is there so, is there a way I could use my skills to help ease suffering for cancer to make it so people can get detected earlier? So what I did is I um, uh, quit my job as a design professor, moved to London to get a PhD, in how to tackle this problem of communication. So um, I created this, this campaign called Know Your Lemons, where I use lemons as a visual metaphor for breasts, because what holds back these like breast self conversations is taboo around breasts because breasts are associated with sex, right? And then fear because cancer is associated with death. So you've got breast cancer, which is essentially sex death. And all of a sudden, no one's talking about it, right? And like in school, we learn about every part of the body except for breasts, right? So we have this huge like right. knowledge gap where we like don't know our breasts, we don't know what to do about it. And somewhere, somehow, we're just gonna like pull this information out of the air. So by, by the, the thing that, um, that, that we're most known for is this 12 signs of breast cancer image. Um, you'll, you'll see it right on the homepage at knowyourlemons.org but it teaches you that there are actually 12 symptoms of breast cancer to look out for. And so far since 2017, we've reached 1.85 billion people in 34 languages with this message. Say that again, say that again. We need more, we need more women to know this. And so that's why we're doing this self-exam September. And we are like, so, so excited to be talking about this and how people can get involved. We have like the easiest way possible. Like we're, we're so excited. So we'll do that. Irene, I'll, I'll Hi. talk over to you. Uh, I'm Irene. I'm the development director with Know Your Lemons. And my why is I lost my aunt to breast cancer when I was 15. Um, she was diagnosed really, really early in the eighties. And at the time um, she was 29 when she was diagnosed her first time. And at that time, uh, insurance wouldn't pay for reconstruction. And so she had to make a difficult decision, right? For a 29 year old, do I keep my breasts or do I, do I have a mastectomy and, and, you know, go into debt and, and try to get reconstruction. So she opted because of, of that law opted, um, not to get a mastectomy. And 11 years later, it came back and took her life. Um, for me, I'm all always all about knowledge and because of breast cancer, and sex death, 
I grieved and then it was over, not over, but you know, I grieved and then I didn't think about breast cancer again until I was breastfeeding my twins at 36 again. And I'm like educated. I gather knowledge everywhere I can. And all of a sudden I'm breastfeeding and I have, I have mastitis and I was like, I have breast cancer and went into a tailspin. And then I started researching and finding out more and, um, realized, you know, women deserve to know more. We don't deserve to be in this place of knowing that breast cancer is so prevalent but not knowing what to do about it. And that gap just fills with fear. And so we want to take that fear away. We want to empower women with the kind of education that will help them recognize any change in their, in their bodies and, and save their lives. Wow. And you know what, you guys, I started thinking earlier this week that every day we get new women in our family. Every day, every day, somebody gets that call Yes, you have breast cancer. So all of our education that we all do, and you guys are doing so amazingly well, um, is great. But there's new people to educate every day, right? Either a little girl gets boobs, another little girl goes through puberty, another woman starts breast can um, breastfeeding, and another woman gets breast cancer every day. So we have this fluid audience that just replenishes itself every day. So we can't ever stop. Yeah. Because we're never, so we're never even, there's no, there's no end to this. There's no end. Right. Every yeah. day. Sadly, sadly um, there, there, there is no end. I, I think it's such an important point that you bring up though, Ricky, because sometimes, you know, you feel like you're beating that same drum, right? You're sitting on your stump and you're just kind of harping on the same thing over and over again. But I think it's, it's why you know, apps like this are so important and, and, and why campaigns and, and programs like, like Love of My Girls are so important because you reach a different demographic and it spreads and it just keeps spreading. And it's this sort of evergreen, never ending cycle of, of giving good information and helping people to cut through some of the noise and the chatter. And, and I think September is a great month to do it because you know, coming into October, everything does get a little bit uh, pink washed and it becomes sort of a uh, an, an influx of everything. It's just, it's almost like overstimulation. And for people who have had breast cancer, it can be a little bit challenging. But for the rest of us, sometimes it's a nudge in the right direction, but sometimes it's like a little too much. And and so starting in September, reminding people that every month, like breast cancer doesn't just start or stop in October, like people are living with it, you know, 365, and it's always a good time to check in. And that's the thing, like a lot, so many women say, oh, I don't want to do my self exam because, you know, uh, um, I, it just feels yucky to me, or, you know, like there's a lot of, uh, of uncomfortableness with, yeah. with breasts, you know, and, and I don't know if lemons are more comfortable to squeeze, but I think we all, we, we do, right? And we feel them and we, 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 we pick our fruit better than we feel our own chest and our own yeah. breasts, yeah. right? Yeah. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I mean, that's why we think it's, it's important to teach, normalize this conversation, right? Like we should be teaching girls when they're in school, we should be having them share information with their, their parents, with their grandparents. Um, you know, it, it's just like Ricky said, you know, there's, there's girls that are going through puberty, puberty all the time. There's girls being born there, you know, and so this, this cycle is really something that we need to stop and, and just normalize and allow women to talk about it and to have that education in a way that is approachable and easy to understand. No, that's like, what I love this information. Cause again, like you see the egg carton, you remember there are 12 signs of, of uh, symptoms, right? And like, just, you guys have such great visuals to make things really clear and memorable. And then my favorite part about your, no, your lemons, everything is that like, you don't like, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, literacy rate is not, you know, a, a part here. Um, you know, language is not a, a piece here. You guys really go combat those barriers in such a beautiful way. And so that's why, I mean, I've, I literally am always telling people to download your app <laughs> because yeah. it's so yeah, easy yeah. to use and you're making it accessible to young women and the lemons, especially it's now accessible to young women for those, like Dr. Mo said, like people who aren't in touch with their bodies in that way, right? And that could just be from like a self-image thing happening. It could be from so many reasons. You can be like your boobs fell after having babies, you know, like whatever you have made, that discomfort can come from so many different places and, or they fell before having babies, like, you know, like whatever. Um, after. <laughs> right? It's yeah. so important though, to like, you guys normalize breasts in such an, an awesome yeah. way and humanize it in a way without, um, 
making it daunting. So that's without why fear, I, without fear. Can yeah. you show some lemons? I think it'd be great if somebody could, people could see yeah. what we're talking about. You're so, gonna... okay. So this, this is like one of our, our squeezy lemons that we have. This is like a part of our self-exam kit. So it's like a stress ball, but when you squeeze it, there's like a hard lump inside. Hmm. And um, then there's like a, a QR code to our app. It comes with um, a poster. So I'll, I'll pull out. So this is like the packaging that comes in it has a little poster inside. Um, but people have said like, with squeezing the lemon, like you have to squeeze kind of hard to like get down in to fill that lump. And some women have said, oh, well, when I've been doing my self exams, I've just been kind of like lightly touching here and there, right? And like, like we do see um, a lot of things on social media, people like, let me show you how to do this. I'll, I'll show you today how to do a self exam. And everyone's kind of doing this cute little thing right but like a self-exam is like you want to fill down to the rib cage because like it's from your rib cage outwards that, that you need to be filling all of that so so these are the 12 signs of breast cancer you can see that so um, cool. and this this shows like different ways that cancer can present itself some of these like the most common symptom is is a hard lump usually um, but there's also things like a dimple or an indentation in the skin. So we had this one patient that shared her story with us. It was amazing. She um, lives in Australia. She was at her doctor's office for a different reason. And as she was checking out, they had this poster at, at the desk and it caught her eye. Cause she's like, why are there 12 lemons inside an egg carton? <laughs> right. So <laughs> it made her curious. She looked a little bit more closely and saw this indentation on one of the lemons. And she said, hold on. I have that on my breast. That's a symptom of breast cancer. I just thought I was getting older. I just thought this was like new dimples showing up around my body, right? Wow. So, so she made an appointment with her doctor and three weeks later, she was starting treatment for stage two breast cancer. And she says, if that poster hadn't have been there, I'd like, like what would be happening to me, right? Like the cancer would just keep on going because she had well, no, you no idea. Know. Yeah. So what we're doing for, September is really focusing on like our, our breast health is like in our hands and it's in our hands in a couple of different ways. One is like, you know, literally doing self exams, filling around, understanding what's normal for us. Right. Cause like we know a self exam is not a hunt to find cancer. And this is why it gets such a bad rap. Sometimes as people are saying, well, you know, you shouldn't have women going around trying to find their own cancers. Like they should be getting mammograms. It's like, yes, definitely get mammograms that can find a cancer slump before it can be felt, but you can't time when cancer is going to show up either. Like it's, it's not going to show up the day before you've got your mammogram. You need to be checking before your mammograms. And for a lot of people that are right. under mammogram age, if they're not doing self exams, like, 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 like how are you going to be able to catch if some things change because you don't know what's normal for you. So, right. Like self exam is like knowing what's normal for you. So that way you can identify a change more e easily. The other thing that it, that it's in your hands is like we have this app and the app will send you like monthly self-exam reminders. And if you menstruate, it will tell you the time during your menstrual cycle that's best for you to check. And that's because the second half of our menstrual cycle has progesterone in our system and that causes lumpiness and tenderness and swelling with our breasts because it's preparing for possible pregnancy, right? And so we go through these like cycles with our breasts and it changes throughout the month. And so what tends to happen is that our breasts start to get really talkative that last half of our cycle. And we go, oh, this doesn't like feel so good or like, oh, this is sore. And then we kind of feel- I got to like, pause. You yes, said please, talkative. Dr. You I said talkative. I love and that. I absolutely love the fact that you said our breasts get talkative, right? It's not that. a thing to be afraid of, right? We call it in, in the radiology world, radiologists say you have busy breasts. And sometimes in the <laughs> breast clinic, we'll say you have busy, but they're up to something, I guess, you know, they're, they're busy. But, um, but, but talkative is such a good term because it normalizes the fact that our, our breasts are doing stuff. They're responding to hormonal changes. They're responding to fluid shifts and, you know, they swell and recede. I tell patients they swell and recede like the tide. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, your our, our breasts will get engorged and then it'll go away and they'll feel fuller and heavier and tender. And I love that you're normalizing these changes. This is so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And like like knowing that 
can help you not panic when you notice a menstrual cycle change, right? Because then you go, hold on, wait, when is it in my period? Is this sticking around? Is it getting worse? And if it's going away, it's not getting worse. And you're noticing this as like a regular kind of part of like your breast cycle is what we call it is a breast cycle. Then you go, ah, I know what's going on. I understand this change in context. I know this comes and goes. And knowing that information, if something does stick around, something is getting worse, you go, I know that this isn't cyclical. I know this isn't something that's dealing with my menstrual cycle. Because the first thing a doctor is going to ask is trying to determine if this is just a menstrual thing or not. Right. right? And so if you're able to have all that knowledge with you and, and the app, like if you notice a breast change, you can like say, Hey, this is a symptom or symptoms I'm noticing. It explains them in detail, explains how this can be related to harmless things. Um, and how it can also be an indication of different kinds of breast cancer. And that says, here are the, the things that, that you're going to need to tell your doctor, like how long has it been there? What is the symptom? Do you notice it coming and going with your period? Is it getting worse? Those types of things. Because sometimes what happens is we notice a change and you know, there's like fight or flight, but there's also freeze. And, mm. and, and, and when you don't have information, there's kind of nowhere to go. And you're just kind of freezing and you're like, oh, um, hold on. Do I need to talk to my doctor about this? Is it this serious? I don't know what to do. So the app helps you kind of nudge you through those steps. And then it tells you how to prepare for diagnostic testing. So mammograms, ultrasounds, breast MRI, biopsy, prepare for all those tests, understand the order that those things go in. Um, just makes it really easy again, just to take like the fear and the confusion out of how to manage breast health. Cause the app just clearly explains everything that you need and sending you those reminders. And then a really fun thing is if you're using the period tracker on it, a few days before your period, it'll send you a text saying your period's coming and it's time to stock up on some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like get, get ready, get some chocolate. Like it. it's coming. Like <laughs> so we make it fun. I love that. I love it because what you're, you're just bringing awareness to our health. If you think about it, what body parts do we spend time on? Right. As women, our face, how much time do we spend on our face, our hair, even our skin, like putting lotion and whatever product on our skin. And like, you know, like we don't really think about, we take our bodies for granted. Right. Or we worry about our weight or we worry about you know, how big our butts are, our hips or whatever, like, you know what I mean? But we don't really think about our body parts as like organs that are living, that are breathing and that are like part of our daily life. You know, it's how to put your bra on. I don't really want my, my little fake boobs are bigger than the ones that tried to kill me, but, but, um, but just putting your bra on, you don't think about what's going into that bra. You think about what the bra looks like or what your boobs look like when you're, when you want to, you know, yeah know get some clean or whatever but we're not thinking about and I think what this does is it normalizes just thinking about the inside and what's going on and what's what's yeah, making and it happen I like everything too in this way because for me it's like I know the right thing to do I know the healthier life to live like I know that I should not have had that drink or whatever it might be but it's how do I turn my awareness into action? And I feel like you guys are giving such actionable steps to right. preventing this disease. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, it's really easy to know that I should go to the gynecologist every year. Does that like, did that happen in all like th throughout all my twenties? No, you know? And like, even though I knew that was the right thing to do. And I, and sometimes you just need that little bit of those baby steps and you guys provide oh. those baby actionable steps so that like, it's easy for young women to engage in this routine, you know, yeah, and think exactly. that make it, even, even your self-exam September, right. To, it's like not breast cancer or this month. That seems like ambiguous, you know, and like, you don't know what that means. And like, no, you're saying self-exam September. Self-exam. I also love it. I love a good alliteration. So it got me immediately. <laughs> definitely. Well, definitely. and Haley, I love how you talk about like, like how, like we know it's good for us, but sometimes we don't always do it. So, um, leading up to like how people can participate in self-exam September, we're asking people 
to send a text to a friend. And this, this is what the text can say. Hey, do you do monthly self exams? And then put two lemon emojis at the end of it. All we're saying is start that conversation with a friend and the Know Your Lemons app can do the rest. It's gonna send you the monthly reminders. It's gonna teach you how to self-exam. It's gonna do all those things, but you're gonna pinky promise together that you're gonna keep this commitment. You're gonna build that good habit. Cause when you, when you commit with a friend, we're far more likely to keep that good health habit than if we're just trying to go at it on our own. So, you know, at every wow. month you can do like a self-exam with the app and then send your friend two lemon emojis to be like, did it. Yeah. And if your friend hasn't sent you two lemon emojis that month, you can go like, hey, wait a minute. Hey, I'm, I'm checking in on you. I want to make sure that you're keeping up with this commitment, right? So, so the app can help and it can nudge and educate and do all of those things. But it's really like making that pinky promise with a friend to be like, wow. hey, we're going to commit to this together. We're going to, you know, do our mammograms, book them together, like that sort of thing. Yeah, it's I, like I love that. I, I, I advise my patients that too, like tie it to something. Maybe it's you and a classmate that you haven't seen in forever and you only get together once a year and you have lunch or you go get your pedicures or you do some other self-care thing, right? But that's your accountability person because we'll show up for other people, especially, especially black women. Yeah. Like we, we don't always show up for ourselves, but if we know somebody's dependent on us, we will get that thing to that church. We will go deliver that ride. We will take our last bit of gasoline. We will give our plate of food away. Like we are just, it's something about being there for other people that feels so meaningful and worthwhile that that you know we'll we'll do it more often than we'll do it for ourselves. And Haley, during COVID, nobody did anything for themselves, right? Because the one, the doctors told people don't go to the hospital, which you know I understand why COVID is ramping up again. Please get your mammogram. Please, if you feel something, go see a doctor. But we also taught people the wrong thing, in my humble opinion. And this is an example again of of where medicine kind of can can take a left turn in Albuquerque you know we, we told people to feel for lumps instead of feeling for normal and mm. now we're backtracking right because every everybody I know that says oh I always I feel I always feel lumps and you know I say you know you're doing your self-exam well no because I always feel lumps the lumps are your normal so let's let's figure out where your normal lumps are and what they should feel like and we we should have taught it a different way and now we have to really go back and, and change that mantra because you know we scared people into not doing it and we not only scared patients we scared doctors into not doing it too and it's why they stopped recommending yeah. doing the clinical breast exam because doctors didn't know what they were feeling and then they weren't sending people to get you know or they were sending them to get imaging for stuff that was probably nothing or they weren't sending them at all or they were making patients afraid and so they said we'll just stop doing them Right. I mean, it's, it's like, instead of right. let's step forward with education and fix this, it's like, right. oh, it's too hard. You can't right. just say, don't do it. Right. Oh, we're just going to forget about those breasts. We're not doing that anymore. Like, are you kidding me? Right. Yeah. Cause it's not like breast cancer is going to be like, oh yeah. Okay. Never mind. Then I get it. <laughs> I'll go away. Yeah. Like, yep. no, like it's still here. And, and if you're replacing right. it with nothing, the then other thing, not going to go away. Yep. Yeah. The other thing is that the interval breast cancers, and I put it in the chat, something called an interval breast cancer. When it's found in between your normal mammogram cycles, we have women who get there every year, they get their mammogram and something totally new pops up. It's not like, oh, you can sort of see a little smudge and it's a little bit more and it's a little more and you track it over time. But when it just pops up out of nowhere, those interval breast cancers are more aggressive. And so it's why you got to sort of know even in between, it's not enough to just say, oh, I did my mammogram, I'm good. You got to check. You got to feel for normal. Got to address it. Got to address it. Right. Got to address it. And, you know, most women find their own lumps. Especially yeah, you find their own lumps. Maybe they're more in touch with their breasts a little bit, but, but um, I think their wives probably do it. Other wives. Yeah. Yeah. Their wives. And, um, but also, you know, under 40, you know, black women are just getting breast cancer in crazy numbers. And so we haven't, it's, it's well before we would have that first mammogram. And so that's why it's so important for young black women. We had a 26 year old die last week, got diagnosed at 22, triple negative. And, mm -hmm. you know, and she had to fight two years to get a mammogram, the first diagnosis. And even when she got metastatic in, in her brain, it took six months for them to diagnose it because she was so young. And the doctors didn't believe her. So that's what we're dealing with in the black community, like getting to Smith. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important that we know 
what it feels like, what our normal feels like. So we can say, wait a minute, hold on. When I did this a month ago, this was not here. Mm -hmm. And like can force these conversations with doctors who are dismissing them because- I mean, yeah, I'm going to be embarrassed saying this out loud, but, um, but I mean, more maybe embarrassed for my mom, but um, it was so important for her and her journey too, as, you know, someone thriving with breast cancer to make everybody feel her lump before she got her mastectomy. So it was like mortifying to have her tell all of my friends, <laughs> male and female to come check her boobs and feel her and feel her lump. But like the intention was so they would know what it felt like. like that's why you have lemons. That's why you have tools to make you re- like that just that simulate the real the experience. But like uh, having a real thing to try it on and feel did allow for all of us to be really aware of what it would feel like, you, you know? So like, yes, that embarrassing moment, we can live through that if, if we're going to like know what it feels like, you know? I had all these young people working for me. I worked, you know, I had an ad agency. And so I'm like, okay, everybody line up, <laughs> feel the lump. Here's what it feels like. And it was like a little peanut under my nipple, but I made everybody feel it. And the men were like, yeah, I'm like, I don't care. Feel it. Yeah. Like, 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 like you, you need to know this information. Right. And like yeah. that, that, the thing that we run into a lot is people say, oh, breast cancer doesn't run in my family. So like magic shield force filled enabled, like Right. <laughs> no, like if you have breasts, you are at risk risk for breast cancer. And and so when we tell them 85% of people yep. who are diagnosed with breast cancer are the first in their family, like no right. one had breast cancer before so they true. did. They're like, so oh, oh, you mean I do have to pay attention to this? Yeah. yeah. Because we and, need to take care of our breasts. Right? And, and you can have breast tissue in your armpit. Right. And it's really important for people to know. And sometimes you don't know it until you have until you have a baby and you start lactating and you're like, oh, why is this tender under here? What's going on under here? You can even have breast tissue under the armpits. And it's so important to check because sometimes we find breast cancers that start there, too. Uh, Mm -hmm. So so knowing where your breast tissue is, if you have a lump and it always gets tender along your cycle, but it's below your breast, it could be accessory breast tissue there, too. Got to know your normal for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the, the app like talks you through each part of the breast up to the collarbone, through the armpit, down to the bottom of the rib cage, that whole area across the chest um, is like where to fill for a self-exam. And Mona Lisa explains like, you know, breast tissue really typically feels different in kind of like this upper corner towards the armpit. That breast tissue feels differently than tissue underneath your nipple at the bottom of your breast. Right. And like, like, I'm over here, that. like, not to feel about myself. Yeah. <laughs> understanding understanding that. Mona Lisa explain explain yeah. Mona Lisa. So, Mona Lisa has been doing self exams for over 500 years. And she's, she's like your self exam grandma genius that's going to like teach you how to do this. So, um, she walks you through each thing and she explains like the three different positions for self exam. The one we all know about is like, lay down flat with your arm behind your head, right? Right. And then, so what that does to your breast landscape is it like pulls it flat, right? Um, The other one is like a candy cane shape. So you stand up and then you lean forward and you just have like your arms nice and loose. What that does is it brings, it uses gravity to bring the breast tissue forward. It's the exact opposite of what you're doing when everything's flat, because sometimes you can only fill a lump when everything's not pulled tight right? Depending on, on where it's at. So that's the second position is to lean forward with everything just nice and like loose. And, and you can really, it's it's a lot easier to fill the the rib cage with that position. Right. And then the third one is standing in front of a mirror and looking for changes, noticing what's normal for you. Like all of us have one breast that's bigger than the other. Right. Um, and nipples aren't always at the exact same parallel. Right. So like, knowing what that is normal for you, putting down a little note in your phone. So that way later on, you're like, hold on, has this always been here? You can go back to that little note on your phone and go like, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's always been here. Or no, take this a is- picture. Take a picture, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah take, take a picture. picture. There, there's like lots of things that you can do to just understand, hey, this is what's normal for me. And then, you know, when it comes to talking to the doctor, the thing that we like to say is, investigate through testing, not statistics, because this is why young people 
don't get referred for testing because the physician will say, well, statistically speaking, it's probably not cancer. So yeah, problem yeah. solved. And we're like, no, if you have a symptom, if you have something that you were concerned enough about that you took the time out of your schedule to call up, make an appointment and go to the doctor's office, that is justification enough for testing. Right. Corinne, right. will, you share, will you share Jessica's story? Because I think that, you know, like, you know, Ricky, you say, you know, younger women are getting diagnosed at higher rates and TMBC is incredibly, incredibly fast moving. And so, you know, I think Jessica's story really exemplifies how yeah. our education is able to empower women to know what to say, know what to ask for, know how to advocate and know how to not take no for an answer. Yeah. So in, in all of the women that come to us to share their story about how Know Your Lemons helped them get diagnosed. The most common thing is they trusted their instincts and they had information from us that made them confident to know what to do with those instincts. So mm -hmm. just say, uh, say that again, you have to trust your instincts. Say that again, those are so You important. have to trust your instincts every single time. We're like, what does your gut tell you? If your gut says something's not right, that's enough. That's enough for mm -hmm. you to advocate till you get your testing. I love that. Like, you listen. Know, I, to that. I tell patients, I'll ask the doctor, you know, is there some imaging we can do to confirm that, even though it's maybe not as likely? You know, you don't have x ray, like, we don't have x ray glasses, right? Until we can actually see what's going on. How can we be sure? How yeah, can yeah. we be sure? Five words that can change everything. Yeah, how can how we be sure? sure? That is so we good. Sure? That's we'll add that to the app, Dr. Mo. How can we be sure? That's such a great phrase to use, right? So, so Jessica um, saw our 12 signs of breast cancer image when a friend shared it on social media. And she said, wow, that's really got me thinking I need to be better about my self exams because I didn't know about all these symptoms and I should be better. So she says she started practicing regular self exam. Uh, she's 33, um, notices a lump that wasn't there before. So she goes to her doctor and says, hey, I've noticed this lump. He says, oh, you're, you're in your early 30s. This, like, this isn't, it's a cyst or whatever. Um, go home. Um, but she was just like, this just didn't seem right. And so she went back again, was still told, hey, you are just too concerned. Um, the third time she went back and they said, okay, we'll give you an ultrasound. So they did an ultrasound. They could see um, a, a mass on the imaging, but said it didn't look suspicious. And she says, at this point, I knew I had three symptoms of breast cancer because she knew all the symptoms. And so she said, I just knew something wasn't right. I finally get this test. They can see it and they tell me it's nothing. And she says, I just looked at them with this facial expression, like you have to be kidding me. Right. And they said, do you want a biopsy then? And she's like, yes, stage one, triple negative. And she's like, I just knew like something in my gut said, right. this yeah. isn't normal. Plus I knew I was showing three symptoms of breast cancer. So I had the confidence to say, nope, I need the testing. Yeah. And so she's just like getting not caught at stage one was everything. And, and as you know, a triple negative can be really hard to catch at stage one, but she, she knew herself and the present the symptoms presented in such a way that she could see that something was happening, right? Not everybody can, not everyone can, can recognize symptoms. And so we, we try to make sure that, th that those messages are balanced, right? Because sometimes you can't find breast cancer before it's getting advanced, right? Um, depending on the kind it is. But what we can all do is self-exams. We can all know what's normal for us. And when we're old enough for mammograms, make sure that we're adding that to our routine because the mammogram can find a lump before it can be felt. Right. And so being able to, to have those healthy habits and take, take off this burden of having to Google everything and figure out stuff and all of that, like just download the app. It's free. We don't collect any data. Um, and it's in three languages um, right now, and we're adding Spanish in a few weeks, which is exciting. So, cool. so and the and the app is at at knowyourlemons.org. We put uh -huh. that in the comments, and we'll put it again. Get the app, and and um, but you're right, Corinne. It's like, at what age we start doing this? And you Nomo and I talk about this a lot. I think you start doing it when you're 12. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know doctors don't recommend starting in your teens, but but we we're seeing so much 
young breast cancer that, um, so our friend may, is in the storm. <laughs> yeah, no we, problem. Yeah. <laughs> she was, we were hoping that she would stay with us, but she's in um, South Carolina. Yeah, our poor, our poor buddy. And you, you know, Ricky, I think the thing is, yeah, it, it starts early, one, not sexualizing the breasts, right? Because that's a, that's yeah, a key yeah, yeah. why, especially Black women, you know, like our, our young women get sexualized so early that anything we can do to not sexualize, like we'll call it all sorts of names and different things and euphemisms. And it's an attempt to 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 downplay so that they, they feel like they can have their youth. But we have to balance that with the normalization of knowing that you've got breast buds and knowing that as your breasts even come in, what that's supposed to feel like, because it can feel like a little lump under the nipple as your breasts develop at, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old. Right, right. And so like normalizing that lumpiness and kind of getting to know uh, how it's changing is a thing that we all should do. But the reason maybe we don't is because nobody did it with us. And so right. maybe we don't even know what we those We don't know how to do it. We don't know how to do right. it as moms. We don't know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it's something, you know, hopefully, you know, I, I'm like, you know, I love millennials, you know, maybe because I birthed two of them, but I think they have a different view of the world and a much more open view of the world. And maybe I hoped, hoped I created that in my daughters that, you know, you can talk about anything. There are no barriers to what you can talk about. And Haley just came back, so maybe she can validate that, that we, you know, we talked about everything in our house. We were all naked in our house. And so I think millennials just have a different perspective on how they approach, you know, talking yeah. about everything. And I hope that extends to their children. You know? they're, they're so limitless. And, and you know, we, we saw that too during COVID and afterwards. They're like, no, I'm going to work from home. No, I'm going to, you know, I, they, they develop technologies that allow us to, to, to keep right. going, right? right? This this whole digital virtual world that we're living in and that we're using right now. I think Xennials, I got nothing bad to say about the Xennials because of that, but they have really normalized doing their thing their way. And, and that is, it's, it's, it's so bold. And I think that's what we need. And it's nice to see young people taking this to the next level because, you know, it, it's harder when it comes from your grandmother. I remember my grandmother talking to me about things and I, I didn't, I don't understand half of it until I got older. So when you see young women who are advocating for themselves, that that's power. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 the shame and the stigma don't exist anymore. Yeah. Great. Well, and I think we're a lot more conscious of our relation, like women's relationships with our bodies, right? And how complicated that is, and all those different factors that influence the complication of that relationship. And um, you know, my my daughter is ten, and she's like starting her her breast journey, right? And we we're really open about it. So she asks a lot of questions. She knows about self exam. She comes on classes with me sometimes and helps me teach women um, about different things because she's excited that she can be part of that. So I know that my daughter is always going to be a little bit more able to advocate for herself because she's seen this example with me. And I didn't I didn't always have that advocation streak. I didn't always have that knowledge or that confidence or ability to do it. And so, you know, I I think we learn stuff, we create things for others, and then they build off that and then they grow and we just climb higher and higher because we're sharing and we're, we're helping each other. And, and that's how we're gonna tackle this problem is by starting the conversation. We make it easy by, you know, share two lemons to get the conversation going and then go from there. Because the, the thing that we're not doing is talking about it. Like after I lost, my second grandmother to breast cancer, we never had a family discussion about, so what does this mean for us? And it was because of that, I thought, you know, I need to go out and start researching. And I thought the bar is set way too high that two family members had to die before I learned about this stuff. So that's, that's why I decided to like commit my life to make it easier for people to understand this so that we can not have these roadblocks and conversations and educate people around the world so that way we're helping everyone that we can to elevate this conversation normalize it and empower women to advocate for themselves and change health systems where we need to change health systems and and help families right because when when a woman dies that is a huge 
impact on the family, on the community, right? Like, like any death in the family, but globally speaking, women are the everything to their families. And yeah. so it's, it's a real tragedy that happens when we're not able to, to tackle breast cancer in a way that is avoiding deaths and, yeah. and making it easier to talk about and normalizing it. So that's, that, that's our goal. That's our mission. Yeah. And you know, yeah. Karen, it's not even breast cancer, it's breast health, which yes. is our, you know, for, like the purpose of our, you know, girls campaign is about, you just need to be aware of your breasts. Like, you know, hopefully yeah. you'll never get cancer because you're aware and you're checking and, you know, maybe you, you can't prevent it, but you can really detect it and you'll be prepared for it. So, but well, I was going to oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I was going to say, um, do you notice differences in the perceptions of women and other parts of the world? Like, you know, we focus on the U S like, are there other cultural things that are affecting women? Are they more receptive than American women or black women? Like, what are you seeing like culturally happening? Wow. So yeah. many things. Um, so in, in Africa, we have a couple of charity partners that we work with. So we, we train them on how to be what we call lemonistas and they use our education tools and um, adapt it for their local local cultures. So in a lot of parts of Africa, for example, lemons are green. So our campaign in Africa are green lemons. Mm. Um, and there was a woman teaching a Know Your Lemons class in the village. And one of the women that um, they had the big poster up of the 12 signs of breast cancer. So she recognized, oh, this is a, a like a breast cancer, breast health talk. So she comes in and says, actually, I've just been ousted by my community because I have all of these problems with my breasts. And so it's a really rural community led by men. And she had been determined to have brought some sort of curse to the village. And so they're like, we need to get rid of her. And so um, that volunteer educator was able to help her get health and resources for her to be able to get treatment. And then the volunteer educator went into that village to explain what breast cancer is to them. And she's taught a couple of classes and she's trying to help change the way that this village is thinking about it. Um, in, um, in the Middle East, there's a real stigma on um, family health issues. And so sometimes if um, a woman is suspected of having breast cancer and she's invited to come in for the test, um, a lot of times she won't show up because she, if she is diagnosed with breast cancer, it will be hard for her daughters to get married. Wow. So rather than getting the diagnosis that can put that mark on the family, she's just going to take a bullet for the team. So in the Middle East, when we're working with our partners, um, like in some of the wealthy countries, they're like, we have all the treatment and facilities available to her. We just can't get women to come in, They're right? Doing this, it. There's yeah. this huge like taboo and concern about how this is going to impact the family. But like in places like Indonesia, which is also very um, like culturally conservative, we have a man that is going to all girl Muslim boarding schools and teaching breast health classes to them without any barriers whatsoever. He's handing out postcards with the 12 symptoms in their language, and they're taking it home to their mother, wow. and they're having the conversations together wow. about, hey, you should know about these symptoms on your breasts. And because we don't use breasts, it means it can be shared everywhere. So that's why they, in the Middle East, they say, this is the only way we can even talk about breast health with women, is using the lemons. Yeah. So. How'd you get to lemons? I love that. Um, well, I, I started off by looking at like, uh, jugs and cones and melons, trying to find this like visual metaphor, you know, jugs look different in, in every, like from the beginning, I wanted it to be global. So I'm like, okay, jugs aren't too universal. Cones are very much about a shape or about like an era, right. Mm -hmm. Um, of like cone shaped breasts. And then, um, melons are really about a comment on size. Um, and so I was, I was actually, um, sitting in church one day and, um, I, I was thinking about, you know, what objects look like breasts and, um, I had this idea of a lemon and I thought you know, lemons are great because they have nipples, they have pores because they've got that skin. Um, 
And if you cut a, a lemon navel to navel, it looks like breast anatomy. Mm. And um, when I shadowed at um, an imaging center um, and I was talking to the, the mammography technician, you know, what does a lump feel like? I said, is it like a grape? And she's like, yeah, it can be like squishy, like a grape. And I'm like, no, like, you know, like, like, how is it? She's like, oh, it's like a nut. Right. It's hard mm -hmm. like a nut. And then yeah. I thought, or like a lemon seed. And that's when the metaphor all came together. So it's like a oh. yellow, happy fruit that a lot of people are familiar with. And it's, uh, you can make a lot of great lemonade with it. And that's what we do. I, I love that metaphor, right? You're making lemonade from it. Um, and it, it's it's sad when, when people come to, to this country or, or they their culture, uh, how, how do I say it? Um, I see a number of women who come to see me from different communities that, that don't really acknowledge women's health uh, as, as important. And those women will say things like, I have chest pain, right? they won't say they have breast pain. And so they go to the hospital and they get a cardiac workup because they said they had chest pain. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, when there's burkas and saris and other things and, and just different cultural considerations, those patients are not always offered chemotherapy. They're not offered reconstruction. They're not offered, you know, symmetry and reductions and balancing. They're not offered, you know, it, it, it's it's so unfortunate, I think, in the, the disparity realm of, of what doctors are doing. But even culturally, what we're teaching, is, you know, is that if you can't see it it doesn't really matter and we don't talk about it for all the reasons that Corinne listed you know and it's 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 so upsetting to see you know the stigma of either being cursed or bringing shame on your family or being blamed or, or even being ostracized like I, I think we got to do a show Ricky and really look into that and see what are the support services and advocacy groups in those communities and and you know what what can we offer to support them uh, to destigmatize things because it, it is so real it is so real and even even all of this sort of I think in the black community there's so much talk about breast as sexual and I, and when you see you see the grandmothers trying to cover up the 13 year old's boobs because you know God forbid you like show your breasts in public you know like trying to hide the boobs all the time and kind of pushing younger I mean, young women to like cover up you know cover up their bodies hey Kai my grand dog is now on, on the show. Um, <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I think that we have, we should talk about the stigma, Mo, because I don't know where it comes from. I mean, I think it's this, this whole thing about, you know, you don't want your young kid to, your 13 year old granddaughter to have sex or your 13 year old, you want to like hide the boobs, hide the body. Um, but then, you know. It's so true, right? And, and, and you just, you, you don't want to, somewhere along the way, and and it has impeded our ability to make progress in early detection, you know, because mammograms are are the gold standard and the old standard, and and we got to have new and innovative ways to detect breast cancer, um, because women don't want them. Who wants the, the 50 pound sandwich right. breast, right? Like they're not using it, even when there's access to it. And it's right. all because of sort of we've centered it around um, other things, around technology and not around the patient, right? Not around the woman, not around her comfort, not around her, her fears, her concerns. And, and I just think that it's, it's problematic for a lot of reasons. And so when I see women-led organizations really like taking this thing to, to where people live, work, how do you say, Ricky, work, play? Live, work, play, pray, and slay what she said and, <laughs> and and that's 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 what we got to do because you know yeah. we can we can do hard things and we can relearn and unlearn some of these things but we have to unlearn the stuff that we were taught and we were taught to be ashamed of our breasts i know i was from the very minute i i developed them i, I was either too soon and my sister was too late you know she got hers too late i got mine too early and all of a sudden there was all this shame and fear and lots of things that that came along with them that we didn't ask for but that came culturally yeah, well, I was flat chested, you know, I didn't have any boobs. I didn't get boobs until I nursed, nursed Amanda, right? But I mean, but that was a whole big thing because all my friends had boobs and I didn't, I didn't need to wear a bra. I mean, like, it, the, but there was a big conversation, even just in my head about like something was wrong with me because I didn't have breasts, you know, like our family's all late bloomers. We all got our, our cycles late and I didn't get my cycle till 16. So, so I think that that, but the whole conversation about breasts is a thing that we sort of deal with as as teenagers that we need to like think about this is this is part of your body it's just like your foot 
It's just like your leg, your arm, like, you know what I mean? It's just like any other body part that you have to be aware of and know about, you know? And, and we have such a narrow definition of what the perfect breast is. Right. Or like, or like good breasts are. And it's like, you need to be this cup size and this band right. size right. to be like ideal. And if you're over that or under that, you're not, you're not right. Right. It's so yeah. true. And like, so it's like, how, how can we help each other, like be more like willing to, to broaden this definition of what good is right. right. Like yeah. double A, double yeah. H, like it's all good because breasts are amazing. <laughs> and we are still learning stuff about breasts. Yeah. That, that this that's new like you know breasts can like long process turn blood into milk like that's crazy that's crazy right they're miracle workers right absolute yeah. miracle yeah. like miracle what work. breasts can do and we just do not appreciate them enough and marvel enough at like what breasts are there's such a narrow definition of how you're allowed to marvel at breasts that's defined by men right right, right. well if you think about it this one right here you know, she ate boob milk till she was seven months old, right? I mean, like, think about that was her only nourishment. But I'm, you, I'm old, you guys. I'm the old one here. But I remember there's a commercial for those Playtex bras, cross your heart bras. But the commercial was like, I'm a 34B. I'm a 34B. And had like all different women staying, looking with different looking breasts, staying the same size. And actually, one of my girlfriends, Audrey Adams, Haley, Lauren, Lauren Milan's mom, was in the commercial she was an actress in that commercial but that was like a huge thing to talk about you know selling these bras like mm -hmm. trying to trying to like make it a you know a, the the ideal boob well yeah. you know who, who, who cares what the ideal boob what is the ideal boob there isn't one and what's ideal to you may not be ideal to somebody yeah. else you know when yeah. when i diagnose a woman i always sort of start with that conversation about how do you feel about your breast and, yeah. and it's a complicated relationship. Some women feel like their breasts have betrayed them. Some women love their breasts. Most of them are, are feeling some sort of insecure about them. They're either too big, too small. One nipple's doing its own thing, right? And I said, well, they're twins. They're twins, but they're never identical, right? right? They're always going to be a little bit different. And then how, how can we better help you to love the breasts that you have? The body that you got, you got to honor it because this is the right. one you got. It's just right. the one actually, I'm so thankful that Thank side you. I would say I'm so thankful that side boob is a thing because I'm never going to have cleavage, but I got some side boob. Like and everybody's <laughs> got a little side me. We can normalize that too, right? Like we, it, it's yeah. it's all so so normal and so beautiful, and and that's the beauty of of, of what you all are doing. And you know, Corinne, you and Haley both is that you're normalizing beauty for for women and what's beautiful and what's natural, and yeah. and and that to me is just that's so special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we but, have a lot of work to do, guys. So much work. Yeah, if you think definitely, about it. you know, we focus on educating the people that that um, you know, that we're sort of reaching already. But again, every day, every morning, we get a new crew, right? That we got to think about, and so that's why we got to keep hitting the road and making the lemons. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Make, making the lemonade, lemonade, <laughs> lemon cello, all right, lemon slushies, whatever you, yeah, whatever what you make. call it, a lemonista. I love that. Lemonista, one. yeah. We also, um, I, um, Corinne, share this story. I feel like um, Irene usually shares this story, but like, I love the story with the connection between Beyonce and her lemonade album. Oh you know yeah, I yeah. I mean, if 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 anyone here has contacts for for Beyonce, if you could like connect us but it's interesting because you know we, we've done know your lemons for a while and then Beyonce came out with her lemonade album and we're like now for sure she should be doing it but her her dad had breast cancer oh, yeah he's been on yeah. our show he's on our show Matthew oh, awesome. he, he calls oh, yeah. it chest cancer yeah he's a yeah. he's an advocate yep and yeah and absolutely 50 percent chance of having BRCA her and her sister mm -hmm. and to me they are that's the platform she should be talking about right now yeah Definitely. A mom of daughters, you know, I wish she would engage in it because because Beyonce is proud of her breasts. Yes. And you, you you can tell she loves her body, right? 
and and very like, true what what an advocate for speaking up for yourself what an advocate for blazing your own path right and and we need more women like that to speak up around breast health and normalize things and you know make lemonade when when bad things happen to us we say no this is what I'm going to do with the situation right like wasn't, Ricky, it also, wasn't it also her like grandmother or somebody who like passed down something about lemonade that gave her the inspiration for the album there's some story here mm-hmm. with like yeah, one that's sound clip right the next generation mm-hmm. about life this. gave me lemons yes. and I made lemonade exactly. it's in there, right? like it was her it was Jay-Z's mom who inspired her that way and so it's another moment where she's like it's super relevant yeah. and you know what she could have acted prophylactically she could have fake boobs because of her dad I mean you know think about it who knows and um but but you know I think we should all kind of beat the drum to um to try to get her to have this conversation for us. I don't know how we do that, but um, she could be a great advocate and a great story for a lot of women that she influences internationally, you know? Absolutely. So we'll keep making the pitch to Beyonce, do you hear us? Right. <laughs> and everybody, you know, buying her tickets and going to the concert. I think our friend, Sheila Johnson, you know, Sheila's our badass metastatic breast that we love. I think she's been to four. Concert. I see she's popping up in every city. I'm Number like, one, yes. I'm I'm like yes, I love it. it. Right, doing her thing. But come on, Beyonce, you know, bring some love to to something that where you could really make a difference, girl. I mean, could you imagine what would happen if everyone that attended a Beyonce concert knew the 12 signs of breast cancer? Right. How cool would that be? Like started a conversation or, with or your or family or friends. Or just learned a self-exam. Yeah. Like self-exam dance that she could teach. Like, you know, the, the oh, yeah. dance. We need, oh, let's work on that. Let's do a self Like, you guys have these awesome lemons. Yes, I have your stickers yes. next to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like these, like living in bathrooms at stadiums and like living on the backs of seats. These are like things that I pass out for people to put on their mirrors because obviously I'm like on board with Mary Lemons at this point. And so, but like just these slight reminders. It's such a small thing. I mean, maybe we should just buy tickets to the concerts and go ourselves and, and sticker the chair. Yeah, it's definitely business yeah. expense. I think. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like we all got to be on saying, you know, we're the outfit and we're the lemon. Or maybe we just get, dress up as lemons or something. I, I love that, right? Like the fruit of the looms. We'll all just do, we'll all just be lemons. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Let's do it. Mm-hmm. With some, with silver boots on. Yeah, single single ladies dance routine would look great in a lemon suit. Yeah. Give me a lemon leotard, I could definitely rock that. I, I, that might be my Halloween costume now. I, I know, have, right? Like the whole fruit of the loom lemon thing going. I on, love so. that. I think that's our Halloween. Let's our Halloween. Let's do a let's do a lemon Halloween party. A lemon challenge. A virtual a yeah. virtual lemon challenge Halloween party. Yeah. Let's talk about that. All right. Let's, let's do a lemon challenge. I like that one. Hashtag, you know, know your lemons and uh, yeah, and have people dress up and and as lemons. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. that'd be great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Corinne. Yep. Thank you. We so love we drive. love we love you guys. We we love our girls. And uh, we're just so proud to be partnered together to educate people. We know that like together we are making a huge difference and it's just really exciting to see all the things that are developing. So, yeah, we're going to be that way. And you know what, why don't we do some lemons costumes at the WNBA games? You know, they're our, or their partner now. Mm-hmm. Ooh, like that's great. WNBA games and some lemon costumes. Good. I mm-hmm. love that. I mean, it's a great conversation starter. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yellow, yellow basketballs at halftime. Mm. All right. We got some work to do, guys. We got some work to do. Well, then this is the point of this. And, and if you're watching us, you got some work to do. You got homework, you right? Do. And your, your homework is to share this. Your homework is to tag a friend. Your homework is to find the best lemon costume you can find. And your homework, <laughs> right, is self-exam September. Right. Text, text your friends with two lemons. Text, 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 text your friends with two lemons to get the conversation started. The app will do the rest. Yep. And self-exam Perfect. September. September will be here in two days, right? Saturday. Mm-hmm. Friday. Yeah, Friday, right? Friday. Right. Wow. Right.
Let's do it. Let's do well, it. Well, thank you. It's been relatable, reliable, and real. That's what we set out to do every Wednesday night here on Black Doctor at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you to our sponsors, to our hosts, to our co-hosts, to our guests. Yeah, and we got a new sponsor, Mo. Novartis is now our sponsor, too, with Amgen. So thank you, Novartis. Thank you, Novartis and Amgen. We appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. You, Black Doctor. Thank you, mm -hmm. That's All it. Right. Breasty love. Breasty love. Breasty love. Doctors in. See you next yep. week. Bye.